Osteoporosis means thin bones. Basically, it's bones that don't have enough calcium in them, and because of that, they're fragile, so they're liable to break. Osteoporosis is really common, particularly in women after the menopause, and osteoporosis sets the stage for fractures. People develop fractures of the vertebrae, usually in the lumbar spine, the lower back, and in the hip and in the wrist. And the risk of these fractures goes up the older you get. In white women, the incidence of an osteoporotic fracture past the age of 50 becomes 40% in her lifetime. It's really up there. It's in the same range as getting heart disease. And in men, it's not quite as high. It's about a third of that. About 13% of men will develop an osteoporotic fracture at some time in life. The older you get, the greater is the risk because the bones are getting thinner and they're also getting more brittle because they don't have the elasticity in them that younger people have. So we have things to increase bone density. Osteoporosis is preventable. Osteoporosis is reversible. We see that done all the time. Usually drugs are used. People are given something called a bisphosphonate. And doctors are actually using these drugs far beyond when they should be because there's a difference between slightly low bone density, which is called osteopenia, and real bone density or greater bone density loss, which is osteoporosis. So the doctors are actually prescribing the bisphosphonates for people who don't yet have osteoporosis just because their bones are a little bit thin. They're not going after lifestyle changes. They're not going after the things we know are re will reverse the condition. They're using drugs. And the drugs, as always, have side effects. The bisphosphonates cause esophageal problems. They can give you stomach pain. They can give you difficulty swallowing. Nobody who has a swallowing problem or a stomach problem should take these drugs. There have been some recent reports that they may possibly cause cancer in the esophagus. There have been other reports that are well known about bisphosphonates causing necrosis or death of the bone in the mandible, which is the jawbone. So people who have a lot of dental problems or who are having dental work done should be very careful about taking those drugs. And usually, if you're having dental implants or extractions, stop those drugs before you have the procedures done. It can save you a lot of trouble. But the main thing is that the drugs are usually not even necessary. There's ways of improving bone density just, again, by doing lifestyle changes. So exercise is the number one item. We have people doing weight-bearing exercise at least 30 minutes, seven days a week. What's weight-bearing? Weight-bearing is walking, it's running, it's dancing. Trampoline, as I understand, is particularly good because you're bouncing up and down and increasing the stress on those bones. It increases bone density. Bicycling, ironically, doesn't do that. So I don't recommend bicycling for people who have osteoporosis because it may make it worse. And swimming is not a weight-bearing exercise, so that's not one I would recommend particularly. It should be something where you're doing weight-bearing and resistance training. That's training with weights or some form of resistance holding you down is really effective for building bone density. We test vitamin D levels on a regular basis. Vitamin D is low in almost everybody because folks are not standing out in the sun with their clothes off all day long. So vitamin D should be measured, and if your number is low, meaning less than 30, you should have vitamin D supplementation. And we usually try and get those numbers up to 50 or 60. Vitamin D, by the way, is important in immunological situations and may prevent cancer, including breast cancer. So it's an important thing to measure, and we do that all the time. Magnesium, calcium supplementation, very important. You want to work on changing your diet around and reducing the protein intake, reducing the salt intake, reducing the sugar intake, reducing the coffee intake, and increasing your intake of green tea. Those are the dietary measures that are effective for osteoporosis. We use vitamin K. We use a mineral called strontium. Very effective in raising bone density. And perhaps the most effective item in women beyond exercise is the use of hormone replacement therapy. Estrogen is known to increase bone density. It simply doesn't simply keep the bones the same. It actually increases bone density. And I've seen bone densities go up 2%, 3%, 5%, 8% in one year by taking hormone replacement therapy along with these other things we're talking about. Very effective way in men who also get osteoporosis, although not as much. Testosterone is very effective in raising bone density. So we measure that, measure the level. We see what the blood count is, what the prostate is doing, because those are items that can be affected by taking testosterone. And then we provide testosterone. We'll raise bone density, usually by several percent in the first year. 
So the drugs, the bisphosphonates and the other drugs that are out there are usually not necessary and I have many patients in whom we were able to stop those drugs when the bone density was improved. We put them on the right lifestyle measures and they maintain the improved bone density and it actually goes up even more without the bisphosphonates. If you're a woman who's approaching menopause or in menopause, or if you're thin, which increases the risk for osteoporosis, or if you have a history of a broken bone, you should be tested with a bone density study to find out if you have osteoporosis or if your bone density is somewhat low. Call our office, 949-600-5100. We'd be happy to see you and work with you.